<laughs> hey folks, I have had a busy morning and I didn't want you to catch me chewing in public, kind of rude. Um, however, <laughs> hello, hello. It is lunchtime where I am and I have had a busy morning so I was just kind of wolfing down some stuff. But here we are, TikTok Live, Destination Decluttered, Monday. You guys, Monday, January 22nd. We're already three days into the new year and how's your decluttering going? How's your decluttering going? What I want you to start to think of before you start to accentuate the negative, I want you to accentuate the positive gather around children i want you to think about it um barbara dean is doing well there we go awesome um start to pay attention to where things are going right where things are going right in your decluttering in your life even and pay attention to how it feels when you're into that and things are going right okay because to me, that's an energy we want to hang out in is, hey, this feels good. This feels good. Having done this, look, I want to do more. Okay. So yes, good, good, good afternoon, Robin. Good afternoon, Kate and Lucy and Terry and Jessica and Dina. And then I'm always feeling bad if I don't um, uh, mention everybody's names. But this is the, this is the, uh, yep. You know it, romper room, romper room portion of the show for us Gen Xers, right? We Gen Xers, us Gen Xers. Um, Efron in rainy Southern California. Better not be rainy in Southern California because I'm going to be in Southern California in the next couple of days and I would like some warm weather, please. I know it's going to be warm, but I would like some sunshine as well. So if you can make that happen, I would appreciate it, okay? Amy L. 466, empty to tote and donated most. Rock on. High five, high 10. Could that be a thing? Um, that is awesome. How does it feel? I hope it feels good to don't, because here's the deal. I don't want you donating when, I don't want you decluttering when it doesn't feel good. When it feels bad to declutter, you're not going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. Excuse me. I also don't want to, um, choke myself on a TikTok live, so I'm going to hold on there. Um, Okay. Now, uh, Robin says I'm a boomer and it's romper room for me too. Okay, there we go. Amy L says it feels incredible with a heart. Okay, now I say that because when the recording of this TikTok live is up on um, Destination Decluttered on YouTube, you don't see the running commentary. So that's why I tend to reread these things so that there's context for folks who aren't watching this live. Also, if you're not watching it live because you're out and you're, you've got it down and you're listening to me, but you are decluttering, this also helps you out as well. Kate in Texas said, just came back from a trip to the Mediterranean. Oh, man, I want to go to the Mediterranean. Any place around there. Ready to jump in and declutter my life? Kate, I'm right here. I'm meeting you where you're at. There we go. Um, Luann Ward, okay, two weeks out from triple bypass heart surgery. Okay, I still have Christmas up. Okay, do not judge yourself. You're not going to get in trouble. There is no official timeline. You have just had freaking surgery, lady. Don't compare yourself to others. What's that old saying? <coughs> Comparison is the thief of joy. How about I'm doing the best I can with what I have, with the energy I have? with the time that I have, with the ability to move around that I have, okay? So everybody, whatever hard time you're giving yourself, cut yourself some slack. Start wearing slacks, I don't know. <laughs> cut yourself some slack. Don't compare yourself. I should be there, but I'm here. You are where you are and choose to believe that everything is happening in the right order that it's supposed to happen. If I could, tr I, if I could say, trust me, that everything is happening the way it should, does that make it feel a little bit better in your nervous system, in your body? It does to me, even when I say it, okay? When you feel better, you're going to do better. There we go. Luann's enjoying the tree. Awesome. Yes, and Grace is telling you to get well soon, as am I. Heal your body. 
Heal yourself, okay? So, Linda MC, yo, yo, Linda MC, trying to get started. Okay, get started. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah, Nike. We need a little bit more help than that, right? Um, and Carrie mainly is saying, how does one maintain after a major declutter? Oh, such good questions. Oh, have you been to the Palm Springs aerial tram tramway? I have. I have, and let me tell you, I just have one more bite here. I didn't eat anything this morning. I did Palm Springs aerial tramway in 2014. It was wicked fun. However, I've seen pictures right now, and they did then too. There's snow up the top there. I am done with snow. So I'm cool with staying down on the desert floor, chilling out, warming up, in the desert, poolside, reading a book. So it has been fun. Okay, so a couple of things I want to address. First of all, I, I, I always forget this. If we haven't met before, hey, uh, my name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. Destination Decluttered is my coaching business, and that's what I am here on TikTok. So if you just are discovering me on your FYP and you're struggling with clutter and stuff like that there, this, that, and the other thing, um, consider following my page. But yes, I'm here for the next hour or so to help you celebrate what's working and get curious about what isn't clutter-wise and otherwise so we can help you kind of just drive in a different a different direction or take another route to get to your, de to your destination, okay? Um, so trying to get started is what we all have to do every day to get ourselves out of bed. Now you can force yourself out of bed and that may be the way that you have to do it if you're not excited about where you're going. You may, it may be forced out of bed. You may be excited to be, wait, to be doing what you wanna do and you leap out of bed or you don't mind getting up in the morning. It is a difference, right? Now, I know that everybody's situation is different, but even if you have to get up in the morning to do something you don't wanna do, <sighs> How can we make it feel better? How can we make it feel better? Now, one of the ways I do it, and I have firsthand experience in this because I used to go on road trips all the time. I love to travel, and this is why I call my cluttering, excuse me, my decluttering life coaching destination decluttered. Is this heart right here? This is your destination. When you're not excited about where you're going, you're gonna kind of dread a lot. Excuse me, you're gonna drag your feet. You're gonna be dragging your feet slow, don't wanna do it, make excuses moving slowly, park, not get started, days on end, you don't do anything. Imagine a road trip towards a place you're dreading going. That's how it feels. Every day, you're not getting in your car, you're moving slowly. However, on the other hand, as I like to say when I'm doing my one-on-one -on -one coaching, on the other hand, on the other side, what if you were going towards something exciting what if what you were aiming for and the reason you were doing all this driving was because every day you were excited about where you were headed, about what your home is going to look like, about how you are going to just feel so much better when your home looks better. And you're going to also feel so much better because when you declutter your home, it's going to function so much better that you can easily find stuff. Take a moment to even just take a deep breath and even for just a minute, envision what your home would look like when you are decluttered. Now, I will allow you that half a minute or 20 seconds or whatever. I will be quiet because I'm going to take a bite of my lunch. But just sit here and just everybody, just sit there and use your imagination and picture it in your head and also feel the feels, okay? Feel how it would feel in your body to be walking around your house when it's decluttered, okay? All right, that was barely a minute, but I know we're here live. What I want you to offer you right there is notice how long even a minute feels when I'm sitting here quietly and I ask you to think for just a minute. Whoops, was my tummy rumbling. What I wanna suggest is that feeling that you feel when you imagine your life and your home just decluttered 
you're feeling that right now. Nothing has changed in your home, but you caused yourself to feel a different feeling just by thinking about it. And the funny thing is the nutty kind of crazy woo woo wacky Pee Wee's Playhouse thing is just by thinking of that destination, you changed how you feel right now. You're not even there yet. I am not even in Palm Springs, but I have the energy of what it's gonna feel like when I get there. And I love that energy. And that energy is going to encourage me to do the things I need to do to get there. Same thing with decluttering. If you want a decluttered home, if you feel better in your and you're excited to go there, it's gonna feel easy. And when it feels easy, you're gonna do the things. And you'll do it and you'll feel good while you are doing it because you are doing it with a reason that makes sense to you and your heart. You're not doing it because you have to. You're doing it because you want to. You want to feel good. And not just feel good when you get there. You want to feel good on the destination, on the road trip. Okay? Joy ride. You know, you want to feel joy when, on your way there. I'm excited about this. I don't leave for my trip for two days. I am in, like, my energy is sparkly, as a friend of mine would say. I have, like, a sparkle energy around me. Not sparkle motion. But um, I am excited about where we're going. And, yes, I have many things to do between now and then. And... They feel effortless because I know I am headed in the right direction. So Linda MC, this comes back to you. Trying to get started, start with the end in mind. If you're not excited about where you're headed, create a destination, no matter how small, that's going to make you feel good about why you're going to then do the things you're going to need to do to get there. How does one maintain after a major declutter, says Carrie? Here's an easy thing to think of. So when you are excited about where you want to go to initially you will be you will be knocking down that giant pile of clutter if anybody has ever watched any of my TikTok lives you will see that my body knows what to say before i can even get the words out so i initially am always talking about this kind of overwhelm of a giant pile of clutter a bunch of stuff imagine the the pile of stuff that you have the clutter that is weighing down on you is all from the past it's right here. So initially, initially, people say, oh, all I need to do is decrease that amount of clutter so I feel better. Yes, and, oh my God, I apologize. My tummy is like, yay, food. Decluttering is a, is a two-step process. It's decreasing the amount of items in your home, yes. But then also to maintain it is to change your habits. And not just about your habits of it decreasing the inputs, like so you don't bring home as much, but also you change what you do on a daily basis so that the piles don't pile up again. Instead of doing something every week or every two weeks or every three weeks and then knocking down that big pile, what can you do today, however small, to make it so that it'll be easier for you to, it'll be less cluttered? Now, I love this because often what this is is habits and surface clutter. And you can change your habits about what you do with your surface clutter and how, how frequently you do it. I know this firsthand because I grew up in a cluttered home. And I was taught, not like, here's what you do. You make a big pile of stuff on the corner of the counter and then don't deal with it for forever. And then you become overwhelmed with it. And then you take it in a box and you put that stuff in a box and then you put the box somewhere else. And then it's nice and clean for a minute, but then you get it and it piles up and then you put it in another box. I don't think anybody consciously teaches you that, but man, when we are little and we're growing up, we are sponges. So you can learn to do things that aren't necessarily making the most sense. That's the house I grew up in. I, to this day, am helping my mother undo doom boxes that she did 20 years ago. But I learned to do something different through trial and error and gradual processes. And I'm here with a house that doesn't look or feel at all like the house that I grew up in. And I freaking love it. So I want to teach you that too. So I say a little bit at a time. When things have piled up, stop making a pile. Start sorting through the pile to decrease the pile. Do the things you know how to do. The stuff you don't know how to do, get help. Okay? So Carrie, changing your habits is going to be a major shift in teaching yourself to not just be a cluttered person. Okay? Boop. Oh, okay. So let me let me let me just make me scroll here. Okay. I love it. Barbara Dean said, put in my ear pods like you suggested the other day. Such a great way to get myself busy. 
Yeah, there we go. Goal, small goal, one bag at a time. I love her. And Heidi, I'm right there with you. Heidi D says, um, she decluttered my pens this weekend. It feels way better to have pens that actually work. Now, to some of you who have whole houses of clutter, you may be like, decluttering your pens, really? I should be so lucky. But notice what happened. And I did the same thing myself. I went through all these pens that I had accumulated through picking them up here and whatever, whatever. And you know you have some things that work better than others. You have some pens you like to use better than others. You have your category called your favorites. You also have ones that you go, mm, I don't really like that one. It's blue ink. When I, when I use those pens, it's like pushing. Oh, that smudges. Oh, that one's running out. That one skips. That's red ink. Notice that you have thoughts about what you keep and what you have. And when you remove the things that you don't like, all you're left with are pens that feel really good when you write with them. Ain't nothing better than that. And that's the feeling you're going for in every aspect of your home. Now that is kind of that um, constant improvement. This is a small variety. The same concept goes with the big stuff in your house. What do I want? How do I feel when I use it? Do I want it anymore? If I don't want it, where does it go? If I want it, where does it go? Okay, so awesome. I love the decluttering of the pens. All right. Um, all right. Um, Cassidy, feel free to move along. Yeah. Um, all right. What do we got? Cleaning my kitchen now. Microwave under the fridge. Feeling great. Notice Mary Jean, you're going to feel great. Notice how it can feel like a chore. Notice that feeling of when this is a chore. It feels like a chore to do this because you're doing it for somebody else because you were forced to do it because you have to do it. Switch that. Switch that and say, I'm going to do this because I want to. This is going to look so much better when I'm done. I'm going to feel so much better every time I think of even what's under my fridge or in the microwave. Every time I open the microwave, it's going to look good. It's going to feel good. It's going to smell good. And notice this too. You could avoid doing the inside of the microwave for a week. And every splatter for everything that week could add up. Or you could get in the habit of just cleaning it out more frequently than whatever you're currently doing now. I'm not saying after every single time, maybe at the end of a day, maybe at the end of a meal. However, increasing the amount of the little things you do will just stop the, stop the, the piles from growing. Okay, so notice how it, great it feels. Okay, so Kit Kat Marlowe, good morning, good morning. Does anyone else have a problem with sentimental items that clutter? Um, does everybody here wanna raise their hands? I know I do, because sentimental clutter is the deepest layer of clutter. It's surface stored sentimental. Sentimental stuff is the stuff that brings up feelings. And we are not used to, we are told as we grow up to become more of like a machine. And I say, hold on, let's flip it and reverse it and remind yourself of your humanity. And you are a human that feels feelings. And when you are okay with feeling the feelings and you feel the feelings and you allow them to kind of wash over you like a rainstorm that does end very quicker, it's more like a burst, cloud burst on Shingle Street, okay? That you can feel the feelings of the sentimental items. And once you feel the feelings, you can make a more informed choice. Do I want to keep this thing? Do I want to keep the story that this is telling me? Is there a way that I don't necessarily want the thing, but what does the story tell me? Is there another way I can keep the story? Okay, there we go. Um, notice that, just notice it. All of us are doing the same thing, okay? You're not alone. Sentimental is the stuff that, that gets us jammed up. However, what I wanna suggest is practice. Practice making decisions about the stuff that you have in your home, that you want in your home. Practice on the stuff that isn't so sentimental. Start with your surface clutter. Start with the stuff that's, in, that you're, that's stored. You know, do I really need all these spatulas? I bet there's one you always grab and one you typically don't grab. Maybe there's certain spatulas for certain reasons. Do you have the right amount? And only you can answer that. But the right quality and quantity of items is determined by you. And I want you to feel good about the level of quality and quantity you have in your home. It has nothing to do with what I think you should have. It has everything to do with what you feel like you should have that feels right to you. If it doesn't feel right, if it feels like too much and overwhelm and I'm drowning and too much abundance, think about the fact that you don't have lack, you have abundance. You have too much. 
There are people in the world who don't have enough, and I'm not doing that whole guilt trip thing. But just notice that sometimes we think that more than enough, more, here's enough, and there's more than that. More than enough can be like, well, if enough feels like this, more can feel better. Hmm. Maybe to a certain extent. Have you ever overeaten? Have you ever overindulged in the alcoholic beverage cocktails persuasion? Two examples. Have you ever bought too much stuff so you have too much? We think too much is going to feel even better. And it doesn't often. And many times it brings its own set of not feeling good. That feels worse than maybe when you didn't have any at all. So just notice that there is a different level of feeling. Okay. Um, Cat Mama, I love this. No more shopping for fun. Now shopping for needs. Yes, I don't shop for fun anymore. I shop to solve problems. I shop to create solutions to things that I need. I ran out of peanut butter. I go buy peanut butter. Um, this new heater, this little space heater I got tends to go clunk, clunk, clunk when I want to drag it across the carpet to me. So I'm going to buy some slidey feet to it. I find my fun in other ways. <laughs> what is it? I get my kicks below the waistline sunshine, right? There are different things I do for fun. I used to maybe shop. I used to go thrifting. I used to go um, to vintage stores and things like that. I don't do that anymore. And that's okay. I spend, I do different things now to have fun. And I'm glad you do too. Oh my gosh, 46 messages. All right, here, I gotta, I gotta pick up the pace here. Did it, I gotta pick up the pieces. Do, 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 do. Okay, I meant to get back to this earlier. Yesi Figueroa. Doom boxes, it's an acronym. Didn't organize, only moved. Okay, notice that. Uh, isn't this interesting? Jenny, Jenny says, I bought a new home in 2020 when the, the, the countertops were cleared. Soon as I saw my counter, I knew that it was going to be my death zone. Have you ever heard of a self-fulfilling prophecy? Notice that if you think it's gonna be your death zone, it's gonna be your death zone. You could have easily said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to do what I did before, and I'm going to practice doing something else in this house, and I'm not going to pile things up and make it a death zone. Notice the decluttering, the decision-making. Everything starts up here, uh, and then it goes through here, uh, and then you either do something or you don't. You get stuck, okay? Haha, <laughs> Jeannie Wagner says, I recently started decluttering boxes of stuff. Now I have stuff everywhere. You know why? You just, your process is just needs to be rejiggered. When you have stuff everywhere, stop. Hammer time. Okay, stop. Stop in the name of love. Just stop and notice. And then start dealing with the stuff that you have everywhere. A couple of ways I suggest doing this. Put it in categories. Anything you don't want, get it out of your house. And the stuff that remains that you do want, categorize it and say, where's a good home for this? Where's a better home for it than where it is now? Get it closer to the ideal situation. Now, for example, with clothing, you may find that you have all your clothes all over the place, but when you go to put them away, you don't have enough room because there's still stuff in there. Realigning the quantity of space and the quantity of items that you have is a math problem. Okay, there we go. All right, um, Bonesy, same thing. Decluttering socks, I have so many. I bet you have favorite socks. I know I do. I have socks that are kind of like, I really like these ones. I kind of like these ones. These are good in a pinch. Declutter the ones that are just these are good in a pinch and wear the ones. Maybe you do your laundry a little bit more, but you're wearing the socks that fit in your drawer and feel good. Okay, there we go. Somebody else hoards the pens. There we go. Um, Carrie Blunt, I get caught in guilt, guilt unhelpful feeling. Just notice that. Guilt makes you feel a feeling that makes you not throw away things. I know there is donation, but any other recommendations? Yeah, you can give them to somebody who wants them. You can offer them up free to somebody. You can sell it. You can um, find different ways to donate it. Many different ways, but what there are different avenues there, but you're going to say no to all of them until you examine why you feel guilty about donating. This is what coaching does. This is why I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people because you and I can only get so into it here in a group environment. But I want to tell you that that's the where to go is to discover what their thoughts are that make you feel a feeling. And when you feel a feeling, you do a thing. Your thoughts can either help you get to where you want to go to or keep you stuck. When you notice that it all is up here, then you can do something about it. You can listen to your thoughts, write them down, process them, feel them, and then create a new, more powerful, more encouraging, more helpful thought that's gonna get you going where you wanna go. 
There we go. Gina says, my friend never puts anything away anymore. She leaves it in bag and clutters her room. Notice your friend has a habit. Okay, there we go. Somebody else has guilt about everything. Everybody, guilt just keeps you stuck. What if I could do that thing that they do in church? I absolve you of the guilt. Do not feel guilt anymore. What would you do if you didn't feel guilty? How would it feel? How would you feel if you didn't feel guilty? Take yourself a moment to examine that. I think it feels awesome myself. When you feel better, you're going to do better. The feeling of guilt is keeping you stuck and holding on to things. What are you afraid that's going to happen? Just notice that. Pay attention to your own answer to that. And when you answer it, you can flip it over on its belly and say, what's the opposite? What's the flip side? I can think of something different. I can feel something different. Okay. I started taking pictures of my children's drawings and create an album for it. Then I trash it. Whatever works for you. Um, okay, here we go. Um, oops, sorry. I hit the wrong button here. Uh-huh. I find that I rage declutter when I get overwhelmed by it. Then I regret it. Yeah, Castine, I get that. I know what rage cleaning is like. Know that that gets you the result you want, but you don't. It actually doesn't. You get one of the results you want, less stuff, but you regret it because you threw away things or you gave away things you didn't want. And then you probably felt like crap the whole time you were doing it because you were filled with rage. Treat your, I have a, treat your life like a road trip. How would you rather feel going through your life and going through any project you have to do? Feel better. Feel not ragey even. Okay. Yes, see, notice I never deal with paper clutter. I do everything but that. Get curious why. What is it? What's the story that you're telling yourself that makes you feel a feeling about paperwork so that you never do it? That your hand is closed when it goes to use paper and you go do something else. <laughs> Head, heart, hands. Notice the connection. Okay. Um, Christine Adams says, what do you do when the other person in the home cannot take the declutter path with you or will not? There is a distinction between that. What I want to say is love them anyway. Notice that you are struggling with your own clutter and it's hard enough to change yourself. Have empathy for that person because you're trying to change your own stuff and you don't know how to do it. So have sympathy, empathy, all the good feelings for them. Work on your own stuff first, maybe leading by example can help them to discover there's another way of dealing with things, thinking and feeling and acting about them. Um, find a way that you can work together with these things and then balance between what is gonna, what is the most thing important to you? Am I gonna really get mad at my husband because there's dishes in the sink? Or do I love him anyway and I say, okay, yeah, you said you were gonna do the dishes, just do them tomorrow and then he does them and they're fine. There's the war and there's the battle. But pay attention to yourself and remember you're trying to change yourself and you are you 24 seven and you want to change yourself and still it can be different and challenging and exhausting and you feel different feelings. The other person may not feel like they want to change. They might not know these things. Okay. So notice that Grace just unboxed 50 heirloom objects and put them around. Yes. If you're saving things to enjoy them, put them out and enjoy them. If they are in a box in your basement question or wherever they are in a box, if you love it, why is it in a box? Notice you're going to have your stories. And um, does that serve you? Does that make sense to you? How does that feel? Okay. Um, boop. Here we go. Somebody just said something. Um, any ways or ideas for paperwork? Yeah, literally pay attention to why you keep stuff. Why am I keeping this paper? I don't know, because I'm used to it. I've been keeping my credit card you know, um, statements since 1989 when I got my first credit card. I have a habit of doing it. Do I ever really look at it afterwards? Nope, I don't. When it comes in, I do, and then I'm saying I'm done. But do I need to keep this as long as I have? Maybe not. Maybe I'll just keep it for a year, and at the end of the year, I'll get rid of them. Okay, sounds good. Pay attention. Head, heart, hands. Okay? Notice that. Um... Guilty of holding on to kids' art. Started to take pictures. Yeah, okay. So kids' art, you know what? Do your kids really want you to save all those things? You can save them for a little bit. Ask them if they want you to save it. You know, have get the kids, get, get everybody in your family involved in the decluttering. Don't just save things thinking that they might want it. Ask them if they might want it. Okay. Um, oh, Lori Hanna. 
One-on-one -on -one coaching has made all the difference for me. I have clear, better thoughts and feelings. I love it. Thank you so much. Always encouraging to hear from one of my one, my current clients. And trust me, this is not one of those goofy like infomercials where, you know, the unsolicited testimonial comes out about halfway through. No. Lori and I work together. I love working with her. I love working with all of my clients. And I consider myself kind of a, a co-pilot on the journey that my clients are on, but also a guide. A guide because I've been through it before with myself, with other people. And so... I know you are making wonderful progress. I know you are so on your way to get there. You are closer to the way you want your life to look and feel than ever before. And I feel honored to help anybody, my one-on-one -on -one clients, to get to where their life looks and feels differently in a way that feels right to them. Okay. Uh, Mommy Salami says, wouldn't believe the things they pound into at Catholic school. Um, I grew up with two people that went to Catholic school. Yeah, you don't have to talk about it. Um, thank you for liking my hair. Um, okay. Cindy Kipps, again, guilt. Guilt could be the hashtag, hashtag guilt for today. Um, what's the guilt? Write down your thoughts. You could say them to me. Notice if we were coaching, you would have to articulate a sentence that, that made sense, that I could understand and comprehend. Write down those sentences that you would tell me into a notebook. And then after it's out of you, get some distance, shake it off and say, all right, does this make sense? Does this really help me? What's the guilt? And especially, I'm telling you people, get your people involved. This is no woman is an island. I say no woman because 99.9% .9 of my clients are the woman in the household and they are trying to do everything for everybody. But get everybody in the household would benefit from the house feeling and, and functioning less clutteredly they should be participating in the maintenance and decluttering. So ask your kids, do you want any of this stuff of yours? And if they do want it, make a plan for that. If they don't want it, make a plan for that. Help them take the next step. Help you take the next step. This is how I coach. It does not, it should not. The only person it should fall to is you with your 100%, your personal stuff. Anything else that's kind of communal property or somebody else's, Get that other person involved, okay? Capricious says, saying, I have decluttered a lot and now I'm ready to contain and organize. Wonderful, and you did it, but I live in a small process and will be moving soon. Yeah, okay. If you are moving soon, Capricious, already start to run things through the filter of, I know this works for me now in my, my, room, my place now, but can I envision this working for me? Do I envision this being something I'm going to use or need in my new home? The other question could be also, that being said, could I pack this away now in a box because I may not use it until after I move? Like maybe you're moving in the beginning of the year, you know, Christmas stuff, whatever. Could I pack this away now and still be able to live? Get curious. Ask yourself some questions to not only set your life up right now in your small place to make it easier, but also kind of already start to plan your future place. Okay? And make sure these things feel good. Okay? Notice this. Um, yeah, trust me. You know, so user 81269, yada, yada, is the kid's art only reminds me of an age that I loved. Yeah. Sometimes it makes me feel sad. Yeah, I miss that age. I will be honest with you. I went through some um, pictures even just on my phone the other day, yesterday. I got into a feel. I was feeling some feels. <laughs> The crazy thing is, is I will share with you that I was initially looking for a picture. Now, a picture of a friend of ours who, when we got our new washer and dryer, opened up the dryer and looked at through it like it was a porthole. And I swore we took a picture of it. I was looking for that photo because I wanted to figure out what year we bought our washer and dryer. And as I was doing that, I was scrolling through because this is the modern way. I'm not looking through paper paper pictures. I'm scrolling through, try to figuring out. And man, did I see my nieces and nephews growing up in front of my eyes. Didn't I see our pup? Now I'm going to get all feels. I, oh. I saw our puppy being a puppy and then being a really awesome dog. And then I saw as the years went by how he got a little bit stockier and a little bit stiffer and it was a little old man. Yeah, those things are going to make you feel feelings. 
Did you notice that? I'm here live on TikTok and I can just think of something and my body responds with tears and a little kind of choked up. We are human beings. We're meant to feel feelings and we can get bittersweet about the things that passed. Our dog is gone. He's been gone for years. I loved him so much. I can smell him right now. That little corn chip nose, that little pointy head of his, but you can feel the feelings and they will be in, in with you no matter what you save because they, the feelings are in here. Okay. And you can miss the age, but you can also love what's happening right now in your life. All right. Um, Oh, all right. His name was Rigby. He was a good pup. All right. So where where are we? I got myself distracted. Okay, that was the deep end of the pool. That's what that's what um, sentimental stuff will do to you. However, I'm gonna paddle over to the to the more shallow end of the pool, which is like your surface clutter. And Jody K is asking, what can I ask myself to get rid of too many black sweaters? For instance, I beg the question: Can you really only have how how can you ever have too many black sweaters? I have black sweaters like you wouldn't believe. You see me, I have multiple hoodies. I wear black all the time because black is how I feel on the inside. No, Morrissey, because I'm the 80s and I like it. I bet you have favorites of your black sweaters. I bet you have ones that you wear on different occasions. I bet you have some. And, and here, being a fellow black clothing wearer, I bet you have sweaters that started out black and now they may be a little bit gray. They may be a bit, bit shrinky. They may be a bit stretched. Look at the quality of the items you have. Start with shopping for your favorites. Instead of, here's a fun way to flip the decluttering. Instead of focusing on the clutter, focus on the stuff you love and pull that out. Go shopping for the stuff you love and then see what's left that doesn't make the I love it cut. That might help you get through your black sweaters. Okay. Um, yep, Danzil is saying guilt, 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 guilt. Why are you feeling guilty? What's the fear behind your guilt? If somebody gave it to you as a gift. I know one of the fears for me is that that person may come over to my house, may somehow know that I gave away that thing, and they may ask, what, where is that thing? And then I'm going to have to confess to them that I gave it away. Have to confess. Notice, I'm going to get in trouble. I would like to think that people give you gifts because they love you. They give it to you hoping it's going to work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, ever hear that feeling of no strings attached? That if it didn't work for you, that they would feel totally okay that it didn't work. That's how I give gifts, and I want you to practice doing that too. Hey, I thought of you. Does this work for you? Great. If not, no big deal. Feel free to let it go. Who is attaching the strings? Are you attaching the strings, or are they attaching the strings? And if they are, notice, you can detach the strings and just let the things go. But you can't do that unless you figure out why you're hanging on to stuff. Okay? All right. Okay, Sylvia saying, thinking about what's going to happen to all my fabric and yarn if I don't wake up tomorrow. Okay, yeah, here's a funny thing. Oh, Mama Salami, thank you for crying about me and my pup. He was a good boy. He was a good boy. But you know, notice that. Notice how feeling we are as humans. We are not robots. So do not approach your decluttering from being a robot and being fearful of feeling your feels. You know, if anybody here has a, has a dog, has a cat, has a kid, go hug somebody you love. After this, feel that good feeling, all right? Um, but you are a human being, you're not a machine, so treat yourself like that. And when you're gonna feel the feelings, allow yourself to feel them, they don't last. Notice if we rewound the tape, I got all like, ah, and then, and now I'm okay. It was kind of a rainstorm, a squall, and I'm okay with it because this is what we do. And it's okay, when you realize that it's okay to feel it, notice that barely took a minute. For me to feel it, to be okay with it, to talk through it, and to calm down. The same thing will happen to you. And trust me, when you're going through sentimental clutter, you will go through that a lot. Oh, and there's that. Oh my God, that's them. Oh my God, that's me. Oh my God, I thought I was fat then. My God, I thought I was old looking then. Oh my God, I look so freaking cute. All these feels and stuff. That takes a toll. That takes, that empties your... That takes some energy from you. So honor that and you will only be able to do so much sentimental decluttering in a short amount of time and then you're gonna feel done. I'm spent, I'm feeling a lot of feels, I need to back away. Surface clutter and stored clutter, you will be able to do a lot more. You'll be able to go the distance with a lot of that stuff, but with sentimental clutter, factor in some breaks. Know that it's gonna take you slower to get through fewer things, but honor that. 
and set yourself up to do the decluttering of the sentimental stuff when you feel like you can do it. And when you feel like you're done and you're overwhelmed and you're feeling done, be proud of what you did do and then walk away and heal. And the next time you come back for it, it won't be that bad. Okay. So there we go. Rach is saying, I have you on while I'm getting started. Okay. There we go. Yep. Kit Kat, go back to work. You got this. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. No, no, no. I just lost my pop. Oh, oh. yeah. It's going to happen. Yep. It happens. We feel feelings. We feel feelings. It's okay. Feel, be okay to feel the feelings. Okay. So Barbara Dean is saying, husband passed two years ago, but I realized I don't have enough time left myself to do it too slow. Here's what I want to think is you're going to, regardless of how much stuff you have left over from your husband, you will always love him. And the love is not in the stuff. It's in your heart. So you can get rid of every stitch of things that every, ever he ever owned or touched or felt or did the things. You will not get rid of the love. When you know that and you, and you can calm down your nervous system to be like, oh, just because I don't have the stuff doesn't mean I don't love the person. That may increase your ability to just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. It takes a while. Barbara Dean, her husband passed two years ago. Two years ago, it probably didn't feel right to do it. When it feels better when you say, wait a minute, I'm still here on the planet. I don't want to do it slow. I want to do it more quickly. Then you feel like it's okay to do it quickly. And then you will do it quickly and it will feel okay. Your husband is going to be cheering you on in the background because you know what he doesn't have? He doesn't have life. He is not living, but man, all he wants you to do is live and make the most of the time you have and not be guilted into hanging on to stuff you have him. He's in your heart. You don't need all the stuff to reinforce it. Maybe you want to keep some stuff. Maybe you want to keep a lot, a little. That's up to you. But anything that's weighing you down, absolve yourself from feeling like you're going to be a bad person for getting rid of stuff. Maybe the stuff you're hanging on to of your husband's can delight somebody else. That helps somebody else. You know, like we just went through, I did a video. So my husband went through the toolbox in the basement. Now he did this because it was his toolbox, but when his dad died, we took his dad's toolboxes and then we went through and sorted things. And my husband's toolbox has some stuff in it that used to be his dad's tools. And he was able to keep some of the things he wanted, but then we also created a donation box and we're gonna donate it somewhere that if somebody who has no tools at all can help, can be benefit by the stuff that we don't need, okay? Um, there we go. Take pictures of the stuff you love and put it in an album or box of pics, or even better yet, um, just keep it on your cell phone. Keep it on your cell phone. Why even bother adding to your clutter of printed pictures? Now, if all you have is like a printy picture thing, I am, I am fascinated by this. The more I coach and the more I realize how much of our, our clutter situation is, um, affected by the fact that we come from a pre digital era. And now we have been in the digital era for decades, but we also have pre-digital roots. We have paper-based roots in a digital world, okay? And we are navigating that both up here and in here. You're so used to keeping the pictures or printing them out. Printing them out of a picture is the way you save it. And then you put it in an album. Is that really true now now? Or do you like do this and then you hit it and you share with somebody? I did that when I went through those pictures I was talking about with my pup and my nieces and nephew. I found some. Oh my God, I could have been all day sharing them with my sister going like, oh my God, look at them. Look at your kids. Look at your kids. So freaking cute. So freaking cute. I had that, but it was, I wasn't printing it out and mailing it to her in the mail and then she opens it up and whatever. I wasn't even attaching it to an email. I, I texted it to her and it gave the same, the same result. Notice where your habits might just need some updating to be more into. And again, this is going to be how it feels good to you. How comfortable to your nervous system you are with um, digital technology. I'm not going to convince you to do any of that, but what I will say is just play with it. I know myself, I went through recently some paperwork of my own that I said, oh, isn't this interesting? 20 years ago, when we first moved here, I saved a lot more paper because it was much more of a paper-based society. We were still new to the digital society and I was a little bit afraid that if I didn't keep this, that I couldn't find the info I needed. The internet has exploded. 
that nowadays, if I want to find out what the make and model, how to deal with the make and model of my dryer, for example, yes, I found the paperwork from it, but you know what I'm most, most likely going to do? I'm not going to go through the thing. I'm going to Google Maytag dryer number XQ0, why does it make a squeaky noise on the internet? We are evolving as a society and just, you know, get in touch with, does your clutter, the, what does the stuff you have in your home now make as much sense to as it did back then? Or is your life different now? Okay. There we go. Susan Porter just says, I need to leave well enough alone and stop rearranging what I've organized. You could, or you could just be playing with your stuff. What I want to offer to Susan though, is think about it. Are you rearranging what you've organized because you're afraid of to organize some of the other things? Or has everything organized and you're now you're going back and kind of um, zhuzhing it up or, you know, what, what do I want to call it? Like optimizing it. Be, cu be curious about that. Be curious about are you organizing the stuff that's already organized because you're afraid of dealing with some other stuff? You know? It's cool. All of this is valid and all of this is good. There's no shame in any of this. This is no judgment. But I offer this to you as an opportunity to... Pay attention, pay attention, get curious, notice, observe your own self and what you do and what you think and what you feel. Because what you think and feel is going to determine what you do. And that's okay, you know, so notice the different things that you do. So Ponytail Girl Vintage just said, my kids just said the exact same thing to me. I'm optimizing, I think. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. A check, second chance to eliminate. I call that kind of going back in and weeding your garden again. Because sometimes when you pull some stuff out, you do a very good first, first swath. I like to say that. You do a first pass around and you get a lot of stuff. And it looks good. It looks better than it did before. That very first pass. And then you've lived in it for a while. And then you say, hey, wait a minute. Could I do things even better now? Could I get rid of more stuff now that I'm used to this level? I was up here and now I'm here. Now this feels okay. I was used to being this way. When your nervous system gets regulated, you may feel like you can go through and do it again and do it again. There will be a point where you stop. And if you don't and you keep on doing it, get curious about that too. But yeah, optimizing it. What you're doing is you're refining it and you're making it ideally even easier for you. Optimization means it's easier. I used to do this in my corporate job all the time. I've done it pretty much in so many of my jobs in real life not that it just is organic to me to kind of do this. They talk about this constant improvement. We used to call it Kaizen. I know there's seven, Six Sigma. Who knows? Maybe there's Seven Sigmas now. There's all of these things to talk about how to optimize things. But you will get to a certain point where things run smoothly. And you could over-optimize things. You could get really fussy about stuff, but I want you to do it where it feels good and functions well, so then you stop and you have time. You have time and space and energy to live the life you want. Now, if you choose to spend your time, spend your time that you never get back, over-optimizing and kind of, as I like to say, like alphabetizing your sock drawer and being Marie Kondo, do it. But notice that's a choice if you're over-optimizing things. Or would you rather have time and space and freedom to do the things you want to do? Now, I will say that's kind of a double-edged sword because sometimes people are afraid. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I like to do because I've never, I haven't spent enough time or the stuff I used to do doesn't bring me joy. So I'm afraid of all that time because I'm going to have to ask myself what makes me happy now when I don't have the answer. So I'm afraid of that. So then I'm going to focus on all this other stuff. I'm going to focus on shopping. Okay. Yeah, so notice just the balance between these things and when it feels right. I have to be mindful to not over-optimize our house because I am teaching you how to declutter when my house is like 98% decluttered. That's why we were down the basement this weekend because we do have some improvement to do. None of it is perfect, but on, in, the, in the levels, in the, in the everyday living levels of our house, our house is like a very awesome, well-oiled machine in that it, I endeavor to make it so effortless to live in our house, to find what we are looking for, to use it and it's in good condition, and then when we're done with it, to easily put it away. Easily find it, easily use it, easily put it away, easily keep it all looking and feeling and functioning well. 
it feels great. And that's on as I live in a, I live in a, what do you call it? Um, I, a, a ranch house. So I don't have an ups down except for the basement, but notice where I'm saying like this, like the level we live on, it's easy to live here. It feels effortless. Like we're leaving for a trip in a couple of days and the house is going to look and feel perfect. Down the basement, we still have some stuff to work through because we're, we're humans, but notice that you can optimize, then you can over-optimize, okay? There we go. See, Katie B just said, I don't know what I like because I'm always cleaning and decluttering or trying to. Notice that the fear of not knowing what you like to do could get you to be like, I don't know, so I'm just gonna keep busy doing this thing. But here's the thing, your, def your destination. To me, it always goes back to the destination. If you knew something you really want to do with that time, I bet you would find a way to spend less time decluttering and cleaning. I know myself, I love to travel. I love to get out of the house. So I don't want to spend, when the weather's, when the weather's lousy like this, cold and snowy, I don't mind puttering around and doing these things that I don't want to do when the weather gets spring and summer and even fall. I want to be out in the world enjoying it and enjoying the weather. So I do this stuff now. This is why I am showing up so much more to offer up my coaching, to say get on my mailing list, to do all these things now in the January, February, March of the life because this to me is when you can make the most of your time where you're stuck inside anyway. And then if you work on this stuff now, then by the time spring starts to spring, April showers, May flowers, all that, then your home is gonna look and feel better and then you're gonna feel better about spending your time doing other things. Notice the fear of sitting still or standing still, Katie B. Notice that, you know? Uh, Mama is asking me, do you have any underage children that live in the house? I do not. <laughs> I do not. I don't have any underage children at all. Um, however, I know that my, um, my suggestions to you will still apply. It'll be a little bit different, but how, how much better Will it be when you have multiple people in the house? The, the way to make it easier for you to live in your house will help everybody. When you know where things are, you know where to use them, and you know how to put them back. Helps everybody. I love it. Breeb, Breeb81 just said, I just got through two boxes of filing today listening to your YouTube. So much can be done just by listening. Yeah. And here I am. I am your co-pilot on this road trip called life, and I am just there next to you looking at you with love, cheering you on, being like, yes, do it. Where do you want to go? Yes, let's go there. I can help you. You got this. You can do it. You deserve it. You are worthy. I can help you. It isn't difficult. It can be fun. Let's make it fun. What are you struggling with? I can help you with. What are you doing well? I'm going to cheer you on. Who doesn't want that constant stream of trickle of lovely words in, their, in, your, in your ear? Doesn't that make you feel different, Lee? Doesn't that make you want to do different things? Okay. I'm here to teach you how to talk to yourself like this. That's why I coach one-on-one -on -one with people. This is what I show up all the day. And then when I do it, I leave and I'm like, woohoo, I love this. I'm helping people. It feels good. I want to do more, you know? Okay. Any advice on doom piles in every corner? Because it's random and odds and ends. Yeah, KDB. Yes. First of all, they may not be in every corner. They may be in a wicked lot of corners. Okay. Says my New England Boston accent. Doom piles, didn't organize. It's random odds and ends. Get curious about it. Take one doom pile, everybody. Um, Catherine, doom is an acronym for didn't organize, only moved. ADHD people, we know what that's like. I grew up in that environment. I so know it. Take everybody. If you have a random thing, what's the opposite of random? Unrandomized, organize. And I say this, get curious. What is something that's not so random? Random to me would be every single item in that pile is absolutely different from one another, that there's no connection. Find some connections between these things. Are there flat pieces of paper? Are there things that are, um, are there pens? Are there, you know, um, gift cards? Are there um, Legos? Are there, you know, He-Man action figures? Find some commonality, find some categories. Play matchy matchy, as I like to say. Look, I've got, you know, a pile of stuff. Then I found a pencil and a pen. Okay, you know what? This is a pencil and a pen. These could be both writing implements. Organize, start, start to categorize and put like items together. 
that will help you figure out then what to do. It will unrandomize the random. It will organize the didn't organize. It will stop the doom and it will show you to follow up on what you said because I bet when you made a doom pile, you said, I, I can't get to this now. I'm gonna put, and I will get to this later. Today's later. You may be afraid to get into it because it feels disorganized and stuff, but I can help you walk through that. I have walked through the valley of doom piles before and I can help walk you through it to realize it's nothing to be afraid of, okay? I love it. Bounsky says, I've been decluttering for two months and today my house finally feels peaceful. There we go. Notice Marilyn and Catherine, they are making you feel good, okay? I am too. The feeling is what we're going for. That feeling of calm and good and peaceful is what we want. So Kay, Katie, stop going out. Yep, yep, catch yourself in the habit. Out of sight, out of mind, buying solutions, place to hide things, saying I need to go out of the house and buy something or order from Amazon and I can't do anything and I'll just shift it. All you're doing is pushing the decision making and the sorting down the line. Um, notice that. Stop yourself from doing that, please. Baskets are, I like to call them, they're enablers. Baskets and trays and boxes and shelving units are temporary. But often what they do is they make you feel like you did something, but you didn't really do the thing that you really need to do, which is to go through them, okay? Now, Karen with two R's is saying, is your podcast the same name? I will, I am thinking of doing a podcast this year. If I do, 100% yes. My podcast will be called Destination Decluttered. You will find it on all the podcast things. But for now, what I want to offer to you is this. I upload recordings of all of these TikTok lives I do. I think I have upwards of almost 140 of them on Destination Decluttered on YouTube. Listen to them without looking at the screen. Instant podcast, okay? Now, when I do a podcast, I do realize the benefit of doing that is I do want to kind of get deep, more deep into certain things as opposed to kind of, you know, problem solving and bouncing all around. So I will do that at some point, but I'm leaving for a trip in two days. So it will happen after that. Okay. But, um, yeah, stop buying and start paying attention to what you already have. You know, uh, podcasts can be interviews. I just want to, oh, you're welcome. Yes. And thank you for subscribing. And I just realized it's 158. We got like two minutes. Um, tomorrow I will be doing a TikTok live. I need to kind of pull myself up from what I was going to say because I want to be mindful of my time and yours. All right. Here's what I want to offer to you just to set you up for success. Okay. Tomorrow, Tuesday, January 23rd, East Coast time. I'm East Coast. I'm wicked East Coast. Okay. 12 noon to 1 p.m. is my next TikTok live and I won't have another one for about a week. I'm going away and I do what I call going off the digital grid. However, I'm not going to leave you hanging. As I mentioned, you can listen to all sorts of pre-recorded um, TikTok lives at your leisure. When you're ready to declutter and you just want a, a nice kind of friend in the, in the background chatting at you, keeping you company, Destination Decluttered on YouTube. Also, um, occasionally I will do pop-up um, TikTok lives. I'm not guaranteeing that I will do any when we're away, but don't eliminate the possibility. If you want to be alerted when I do a pop-up TikTok live, Follow my page here on TikTok, Destination Decluttered. My name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. Follow me here. If you want to be the first to know about cool things I do, hop on the Destination Decluttered email mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. And finally, yet most importantly, if you would like me to be your coach, 10-week program, that's all I ever do. One 10-week program, another 10-week program, another. I can do that for you. It starts with a consultation. You'll find all about that on my website. It is the quickest way, the easiest way, the most direct to you what's solving your problems is to, to get to your destination. Okay, now that's my paid coaching. Everything I offer will help you. Paid coaching is like paying to, it's like a toll road. You pay the toll and then you just get there quicker. So, all right. Um, so just notice that, all right. Everybody, it's two o'clock. Eastern time, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna finish eating my, my now cold lunch that was on me and my tepid tea. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, get yourself decluttered. Know that you're worth it. 
If you know people who are cluttered, one of the ways you can help me is to get the word out about Destination Decluttered. If somebody you hear struggling with clutter, say, I saw this lady on TikTok. I also show up on Facebook and Instagram, though not as much, but that's mainly for the people who are not on TikTok. But I just want to leave it with this. You can do this. This is not rocket science, and you are worth the investment of time and energy because when you invest your time and energy in this, you're going to get a home and a life that looks and feels like you want it to. Okay. And, um, as I just said the other day, let's have fun and let's get it done. Okay. I will see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, let's have fun and let's get it done. All right.